Good morning, good morning, Facebook Live. I am Apostle JL Hodge of Clarion Ministries, and it is my privilege and honor to be with you this morning on the beautiful Palm Sunday. You know, in Matthew 21, I think I'll start with verse 6. It says, So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I just want to pause right there. That word Hosanna, I think is especially important to us today as we are facing the coronavirus on a worldwide um, uh, viewpoint, at a worldwide impact. We are experiencing uh, the coronavirus, but we read here in scripture that the people gathered and said, Hosanna, as Jesus rode in to Jerusalem. That word Hosanna means save now, deliver now, save now, deliver now. Somebody out there declare Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. It is literally saying save now, deliver now. And if we ever needed save salvation, if we ever needed God's help, certainly it is now. And so, you know, I'm just here to encourage that the same Jesus who rode into Jerusalem and the people proclaimed, save now, deliver now, we can too at this moment declare Jesus, save now, deliver now, and he certainly will. Now you might notice that I don't have my wonderful co-host with me, uh, Minister Teresha Dawson, and that is because in our country, in our territory, we are now on lockdown for at least 14 days, and so we're not able to leave our homes, but we've already had worship service this morning, which was beautiful. We did, we had our service by Zoom. We weren't lacking anything. And so churches get creative. There are so many ways to, to gather. There are so many ways to come together and worship the Lord. Now, there's a lot that I wanna to cover today on this wonderful Palm Sunday. So I'm gonna get right into my lesson. The first thing I want to say and, and want to address as it concerns what we are experiencing with this virus that is impacting the world is that it did not come from the Lord. It did not come from the Lord. This plague and this virus, you know, it did not come from the Lord Jesus Christ. It did not come from God. It is evil. The Bible says that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Now, many believers are of the opinion, many believers are of the opinion that this blight on, human, uh, on humanity originated with the Lord. So a lot of people believe that coronavirus came from the Lord to judge the earth. I have a slightly different opinion. I believe humanity created the plague through improper handling and breeding of specific types of animals. So I believe that that's how the plague started. I don't believe that this came from God. I believe that we brought this on ourselves. God is, however, using this virus to show us that we are not sophisticated or wise or independent outside of him. The world has long forgotten the creator God and his redemption plan, Jesus Christ. But COVID-19 is reminding us through its mass murders you know, this thing is, is creating mass murder. It is reminding us that we need God. So if, if, if it has any value or virtue to it, that right there is a virtue. It is reminding us that we need God, that we, we can't handle uh, this situation on our own, and, and, and we need God's intervention. And Jesus is that intervention that God has given. So what does it say about Jesus in Acts 4, 11 through 12? It tells us that this Jesus is the stone which was despised and rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else. Hear that viewing audience. There is salvation in no one else. There is no salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among people by which we must be saved. For God has provided the world no alternative for salvation. 
So the only name that we can call upon is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Listen, I just read the scripture in Matthew. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the people said, Hosanna. And it means save now, deliver now. Somebody needs to lift their voice and say, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Save now and deliver now. There's no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. Only Jesus can save. All right, so let's continue. The Lord did not and I repeat, did not send COVID-19. We did this through our foolish and prolific produ production and handling of animals such as pigs, which are also known to transfer viruses to humans. You know, and I'll, and I'll get into that in a moment. But many people believe that God has sent this to judge the earth. Now, what I will say and what I do agree with is God is using it to judge the earth, but he didn't send it. But he is using it to judge the earth, to judge our hearts, to show us where our minds are, to show us what our attitudes are. So he did allow it, and he, and he is using it as an instrument to bring judgment and glory. But he didn't create it. We did. And so he is allowing the device of our own hands to correct us. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah that your own backsliding will rebuke you. And so our own foolish ways have, have, have been the tool that God is using to rebuke us. All right. So... Uh, this COVID-19 has come about through the mishandling of animals, you know, such as pigs, which again are known to transfer viruses to humans. Think swine flu. Many people have gotten what's called swine flu, and they are, obviously it's come from pigs. Some research points to pigs as a culprit behind the current outbreak of the SARS COVID-19. If you know anything about the Word of God, you know that pigs and many animals are unclean and inedible. They're inedible. Certain animals, God says you shouldn't. You shouldn't eat. I see some people have come on. God bless you. Glad to see you. Glad that you've joined. Um, so some, some animals, God says, no, you're not supposed to eat them. But we eat them anyway. Leviticus 11, 1 through 4 and 7 through 8 states, The Lord spoke again to Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Among all the animals which are on the earth, these are the animals which you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof, that is, a hoof split into two parts, especially at its distal extremity, and choose the cud. All right, so God is telling you what kind of animal you can eat. Nevertheless, you are not to eat those, those among which chew the cud or divide the hoof. Chew the cud among those which chew the cud or divide the hoof. The camel, because it chews the cud but does not divide the hoof. It is ceremonial, ceremonially unclean to you. And the swine, because it divides the hoof and makes a split hoof, but does not chew the cud, it is unclean to you. You shall not eat their meat, nor touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. And so God makes it very plain. And I'm going to really get somewhere, so you want to stay with me, because he's going to show us, you know, he's going to show us that, number one, he did not send this COVID-19, and that we as, a, as believers have authority over it. You know, but we just need to we just need to know that God didn't send it, because if we're going to walk in his authority to address it, we need to know that he didn't send it. This didn't come from him. This came from the bowels of hell. All right. So listen to this. One article I read said that Hubei province, where Wuhan is located, which is where they said this outbreak be, uh, began, is one of the top five largest producers of pigs in China. Over the past decade, small pig farms in the province have had have been replaced by large factory farms and medium-sized contract operations where hundreds of thousands of genetically uniform pigs are confined in high-density barns. So, you know, you have all these pigs in this one location and they're, they're condensed in a very small place. These industrial farms are the ideal breeding grounds for the evolution of new pathogens, such as COVID-19. Now, the article goes on to state that pigs and humans, listen to this, have very similar, similar immune systems, making it easy for viruses to cross between the two species, as, hap as what happened in another outbreak in Malaysia, which they said occurred uh, three years before the COVID-19 outbreak began. Tens of thousands of pigs in four factory farms throughout this area with let which were less than 100 kilometers from where the SARS outbreak originally began in 2003, died, hundreds of thousands of pigs died from an outbreak of a new lethal coronavirus strand called SADS that turned out to be 98% identical to a coronavirus found in 
horseshoe bats in a nearby cave. All right, so you may say, wow, why is all of this important? Well, I'm trying to prove that God didn't send COVID-19. It's really important that we know that God is with us and for us. And if we think that he has sent this and then simultaneously, you know, we're saying, well, God, you know, how can we take our authority against it? We're going to be a bit confused. But God says, no, clear my name, JL. Clear my name and let people know I did not send this. And this is why I'm sharing this information before I get into the next aspect of my lesson, which speaks about our authority to apply truth to facts. Notice that when the Lord called the animals to the ark in Genesis 7, 2, he says, of every clean animal you shall take with you seven pairs, the male and his female, and of the unclean, those that are not clean, two of each, the male and his female. So you notice that, that God didn't have a bunch of dirty or unclean animals on the ark. He limited their number. He limited their number, all right? And I think that the agricultural industry along with governments would do well to pay closer attention how the Lord handles unclean animals. But I would say that this is a message for another day. But God has given us specific information in the word of God on how uh, to handle animals, you know, what to eat, what we shouldn't eat. And when we do things our own way, we end up with things like COVID-19. Again, I have taken the time to share this information to clear the Lord's name. Too many are saying, well, this is God's judgment on the world that has forgotten him. And while he is, is using it to get our attention, he did not send it. Somebody say with me, he did not send it. God did not send this. The Lord is certainly using it to rebuke our hard hearts and our, and our arrogance against him. And he will ultimately be glorified through this. But he did not send it. And I just need to make this clear. So somebody is going to say, oh, you don't believe in the judgment of God. That is absolutely not true. I believe that the judgment of God is, is coming. I believe that the judgment of God that, you know, we have experienced it in, in, in so many ways. And, and, you know, it is more to come. But I do not believe that God has sent this COVID-19 to judge the earth. He's given us the answer to it. He's given us the, the believers the answer to address it. He, but he did not send it. So as believers in Christ, I admonish you today to believe the truth over facts. Now we're getting into my lesson. Believe the truth over facts. And this is, and this is where taking authority over this enemy that is surfaced, you know, in the earth. This is where believers need to hear and, and we begin to take our authority. But if you believe that God sent it, how are you going to stand on his word to rebuke it? So God says, I want you to believe truth over facts. Facts are the evidence or proof of what things appear to be. So you might be dealing with the fact that you're locked down in your house. You know, that's a fact. You may deal, be dealing with the fact that a loved one is sick. You may be dealing with the fact that you don't have enough money to get things done. Those are things that appear to be a certain way. It, it, it's, it serves as evidence to say that this is what it is. All right. But God says to tell you that truth, Jesus Christ, he is greater than facts. So you might have facts and you can't deny that those facts exist and you shouldn't deny that they exist. But Jesus Christ is truth, and he is and always will be greater than facts. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to, to him, I am the only way to God. And some of you need to hear this. There is no other way to God, only Jesus. Only Jesus gives us access to the Father. Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, the facts may be that you don't have enough money. You know, you, you, you may have had to spend money in preparations for sheltering in and, and it may have been hard on your finances and the truth may, or the facts, I'm sorry, may be that you don't have enough money. But the truth is, and my God will liberally supply, fill you to overflowing, fill until full, your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And that's Philippians 4, 19. So the facts may be, I don't have enough, but the truth says all your needs are met according to your riches, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so what the Lord wants us to do is to take out, take the truth 
and place it over our facts until our facts come in alignment with God, God's truth, which is his word. And so we may be dealing with a lot of facts that are difficult, but Jesus says truth is greater than facts, and I am truth. And apply truth to those facts until they are subdued and become what my truth says about your situation. Now, the facts may be that you don't have, you know, the health issue, the, the health that you want. You may be sick in your body. The, that may be a fact. You may be in the hospital. You know, you may have just gotten a negative report from the doctor that says, you know, you, you're sick and, and this is terminal. So that's the fact. But the truth says he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. So are you hearing that? Willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we so that we might die to sin becoming immune from the penalty and the power of sin and live for righteousness for by his wounds you who believe have been healed have been healed so if your fact is that you're not well God says superimpose the truth that says by my wounds by my stripes you are healed and when you continue to declare the truth uh, and to declare the truth of your situation the facts must give way to the truth uh, and you will begin to walk in the promise that God has said over your life you have been healed you have been set free you have been delivered all your needs are met those things are truth and they are way more powerful than the facts as believers we need to believe the truth to believe the truth is to believe the word and to believe the word is to believe jesus christ himself the facts may say you are going to die but the truth says i shall not die but live to declare the works and recount the illustrious acts of the lord according to psalms 118 17. and so you might have been given a report that you don't have much time to live but god says you can declare the truth that says i shall not die but live to declare the illustrious acts of the lord the facts may be that you should be afraid of, of what is happening with COVID-19. But the truth, which is God's word, says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. And that's 2 Timothy 1, 7. So you don't need to be afraid. You know, all this media, all this information going on about what's happening in the world and, and what's going on with COVID-19, those things are facts. Many of those things are facts. But God says the truth is, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear. You don't need to be anxious. You don't need to be fearful. You don't need to be hopeless. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in the truth and watch how peace overflows your soul. As believers, we're supposed to live in peace. Nothing is supposed to shake the peace of God that comes to us through his word and our relationship with him. Now, I want to tell you, fear is a spirit. That's why God says, I've, I've not given you a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit, and it has the power to strip you of a sound mind if you let it. Fear will cause you to be irrational. Fear will cause you to do things you shouldn't do. Fear will cause you to panic shop. Fear will cause you, you know, to, to think in ways and behave in ways that you shouldn't, you shouldn't do and you shouldn't think. Fear will strip you of a sound mind. And so literally, when fear comes in, soundness of mind leaves. And God is saying, for his children, he has not given us a spirit of fear, so we should not operate in fear. I am not afraid of COVID-19. I am not afraid of it impacting my family. I am not afraid of it killing my family. I, I respect the protocols that keep us safe, but I'm not fearful. I'm not fearful. If, if I need to go out, well, before the lockdown, because now we can't go anywhere, but before the lockdown, if we needed to go out, just take the necessary precautions and trust God. Have confidence and faith in Him. The truth is, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, so I can't operate in fear, or at least I shouldn't operate in fear, and neither should you. God hasn't given that to you. Now listen to this. If Jesus Christ is your savior, you don't need to fear sickness, you don't need to fear death, you don't need to fear lack, you don't need to wonder about how how you're going to make it after, you know, you come out of, of, of 
sheltering in place, you don't need to worry because God has already provided. The truth is all your needs are met. Even if you've lost your job, the truth is if you're a believer, all your needs are met. The truth is if you're a believer, you're already healed. The truth is if you're a believer, you don't need to be afraid. God says stop fretting, stop being anxious. Now I want to show you what happens when we when we fear. If we fear, it causes us to be emotionally imbalanced, which we see in 2 Timothy 1.7. It causes us to be emotionally imbalanced, irrational, and to say things and do things that we shouldn't say or do. And it literally summons into our life fear, summons into our life the very thing that we don't want. And I'm going to prove this through scripture. Fear brings the thing that we don't want. Now in Job, Job uh, chapter 3, verse 25, Job says something very interesting that I think we need to pay attention to. He says, for the thing which I greatly fear, the thing that I greatly fear comes upon me, and that which I am afraid has come upon me. And so Job, the things that happened to Job, these were things that he was already afraid of. These are things that he feared what happened. He feared that one day he would lose all of his possessions. He feared one day that, that you know, he would lose his children. And in fact, when you go back and you look at the book of Job, uh, when his children would feast, you know, and, and, and get together and, and have a good time, he would literally go into making offerings on their behalf because he was afraid that in their feasting, they might have might have done something to dishonor God and, and he didn't want punishment or, you know, harm to come to them. And so, so he feared. And when we fear, we say things. And when we fear, we do things. And, and we invite the very enemy in that we do not want. We invite the enemy in. The very thing that we don't want, we bring it in. If Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace, is your Savior, you don't need to be afraid. You don't, you don't need to invite the enemy in. Because Jesus is already resident in your heart through his peace. Through his peace. The facts may say that the name COVID-19 is to be feared because, you know, COVID-19 is a name. And so the facts may say COVID-19 needs to be feared. But the truth, Philippians 2, 9 through 11, y'all want to hear the truth? God has highly exalted him, referring to Jesus Christ, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. God, I feel that. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in submission of those who are in heaven and, and on earth and in under the earth. And that every tongue will confess and openly, openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, a sovereign God to the glory of God the Father. And again, that's Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Did you hear that? At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and tongue confess. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess. Jesus' name is highly exalted. It doesn't matter what the name is. It doesn't matter if it's cancer. It doesn't matter if it's arthritis. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's warts, whatever it is. At the name of Jesus, it must bow because Jesus' name is greater than every name. You know, some people think they have such a, a high falutin name. They, they think that their name is, is so much more important than others. But Jesus says, my name is still higher. And because his name is higher and greater, we are to take that name of Jesus and crush, crush COVID-19 and anything else that acts as an enemy to the initiatives of God and to the will of God and to the kingdom of God. We are to take the name of Jesus and make those things subject. It's just the name. Somebody say it's just the name. COVID-19 is just the name and it is subject to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is subject to his power. It is subject. Do you understand that when you say the name of Jesus, uh, things begin to happen? Because God has given him a name that is highly exalted above everything, the, the very earth responds to the name of Jesus Virus has got to respond to the name of Jesus. Adam's got to respond to the name of Jesus. The sea has to respond to the name of Jesus. Everything has to respond when you release the name Jesus. Are you in a situation where it just seems like you don't know what to do? You're hopeless? Call upon the name of Jesus and say, Hosanna. So say, Jesus, Hosanna. It means Jesus, save now, deliver now, save now, deliver now. 
Does anybody need deliverance? Does anybody need help out of a situation? Call his name. Hosanna! Call him, Jesus, and declare Hosanna. It means to save now and to deliver now. If believers would start lifting up the name of Jesus, COVID-19 would become under such pressure that it would have to break. And so my, my hope is that as you watch this video, you begin to praise your God. Because one of the things I see the enemy doing is stripping praise and, and worship for God from the earth. How is he doing that? Well, because, you know, organizations and gatherings are now locked down in many places in the world. You know, the, the church is not able to meet. Many people believe that because they're not in church, they can't worship, they can't do the things that they normally do. But we are the church. We are the ecclesia. We are the, 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 the ones whom Jesus died for and, to, and, and, and rose again to institute and place in the earth as his representative. So we're not a building. So you can't let, let, let praise and worship for God be stripped from the earth because of all that is happening and because you're not in your church building. Right where you are, let, lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Come on, bless him and worship him. Tell him how great and how wonderful he is. Tell him how awesome he is. Right where you are, worship him. You don't need to be in the pew. You don't need to be in the box. Think about this. When Jesus rose from the dead, he came out of the tomb. And, you know, for us as, as believers, many times we go into the building, which sometimes just represents a tomb because it doesn't allow us to do anything outside of our box. God says, come on, think outside of the box. Don't allow worship and praise to be stripped from the earth because you're not in the church building. You should be a worshiper regardless of whether or not you're at church. God is looking for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. And if all you got is a Sunday morning worship, that is not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. God wants worship. And as we worship him, and instead of worshiping COVID-19, if COVID-19 keeps coming out of your mouth, coming out of your mouth, coming out of your mouth, and you're not worshiping God, there's some misplaced, there's some uh, misplaced priorities here. God is priority. Worship of God is priority. And God is saying, don't let it be stripped from the earth because of what is happening. Give him the glory. I'm a worshiper. I love to worship God. I love to, to go into his presence and tell him how great and how wonderful he is. And when I talk about worshiping God, I'm not talking about telling him what you need. Oh God, I need this. And oh God, I need that. No, it's telling him how great he is, how, how you esteem him, how you love him, how you can't live without him, how he's your all in all, how grateful you are to be saved, how grateful you are for what he's provided for you. And so this is what God is looking for. Are there any worshipers out there? Is, it, is there anybody who wants to worship the Lord? Or do you need to be at Sunday morning service or at Bible study to get that done? If, if that's where you are, you have yet, you have yet uh, more growing in your understanding of who you are called to be as the church, as the church, as the church. And so God is, is saying, I want some worship. I want some worship and I will move in the earth. I truly believe that. I truly believe that, you know. And so I, I'm about to, to wrap up and, and to spend a little time in prayer, but there's, some, there's just some fine points I want to hit. There's some fine points. Currently, there is a concern in my country of dwelling where I live that COVID-19 is going to spread exponentially because of the mass numbers of people who went food shopping in preparation for our current lockdown, who are who in many cases when they went shopping did not practice social distancing. You know, and so there's the thought that, oh, now many people in our country are going to get COVID-19. At the time of this recording, we only know of three persons in our community who has that and we thank God and we trust God that that number will stay uh, uh, at that and drop as those get healed. Now, you know, God wants us to, to superimpose truth over facts. The truth, the, the facts are, I'm sorry, the facts are, if you don't practice social distancing and are careless in that way, the facts are this thing spreads. But the truth is God is merciful. You know, I, I'm sure that people wanted to practice social distancing, many, but you just didn't think about it. I was out there, uh, you know, when we were shopping and it was hot, 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 hot. And I, I'm telling you, I was thinking about social distancing at first, but then I was so hot. All I could do was think about getting out of the sun and that there were people there in the shade. I was going over into the shade. And so, you know, 
it, it kind of went out the window in some respects, not in all ways, but in some respects it did. But God is merciful. That's the God that I serve. And I believe that he has provided protection for us in the midst of, of that situation where we didn't practice social distancing. And so my declaration is Psalm 103, 8 over my country. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in compassion and loving kindness. So I forbid the spread of COVID-19 because, you know, in that moment, people weren't practicing social distancing as they were pressing to get their, their needs met. And so I believe my father is loving and kind and that he will have mercy on our failure to, to observe the, the protocol. So I am not going to invoke more uh, uh, sickness in this land by believing that. I choose to trust the truth over the facts that says, you know, well, it's gonna spread. I choose to believe God. I refuse to disseminate the negative uh, 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 ideas and, and the, negative, the, the negative facts about this, but I choose to believe that God will extend his mercy to us and to every country in the world experiencing this. And I wanna declare over my country and over your country, Psalm 91, one through seven, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Mm, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Verse three, surely claim this for your country, claim this for your community, claim this for your family. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings he sh you shall take refuge. His truth, listen to this, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Are you hearing this? Nor of the destruction that lays, lays waste at noonday. A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Anybody want to lay claim to that, that truth? Anybody want to lay claim to that truth? I claim that truth for myself today, for my family, for my loved ones. And you need to do the same. The perilous pestilence, God says that he'll deliver us from it. And a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. It shall not come near you. For the believer in Christ, the word truth, the word truth, should prevail over every fact in our life that does not align itself with the truth, God's word. And so God is challenging us from Isaiah 53, one, to believe his report. Who has believed and confidently trusted in and relied on and adhered to our message, our report of salvation? And to whom, if not us, the believers, has the arm and infinite power of the Lord been revealed? Now, God is saying right here, listen, the truth of God's word should have already been revealed to us somewhere in our life. You must have seen the truth of God's mighty power somewhere in your life, you know, before we met these, this circumstance of COVID-19. Surely you've seen God, you know, do something for you. Sure, you have seen the arm of the Lord revealed in your life where he has brought you through something, brought your family through something. And so God is saying, who has the arm of the Lord been revealed to, if not us, the church? Nobody. Truly, the arm of the Lord has already been revealed to the church. We have seen God do some wonderful things, and we are to expect that he will do wonderful things right now. Don't let, don't let your world be filled with negativity. Yes, this is a serious situation, but it's not greater than Jesus. It's not greater than Yeshua. It's not greater than God. Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus is still king and he's still Lord. As kingdom citizens, the Lord is challenge, challenging us right now to believe his truth over the mounting facts surrounding COVID-19 and all the circumstances connected to its existence. It is, and I wanna say this clearly, it is, I am not being dismissive or irresponsible or foolish to trust in the word of God over the facts of COVID-19. It just means I choose to believe that God's word is the remedy to this thing that we are facing and experiencing. Responsible, hear this now, and mature believers choose faith over fear while obeying the health guidelines. 
And so I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to choose, choose faith over fear and to choose truth over facts. Trust God, have confidence in him and obey the guidelines that have been given for your protection and the protection of others. But trust God. Don't make, don't make COVID-19 bigger than Jesus. Jesus is still on his throne. And he's just looking for people who will proclaim his glory in the earth and lift up his name and, and have confidence in his name, more confidence in his name than you have that you're going to get sick from this thing. God says, no, have confidence in me. Those who put their trust in the Lord will never be made ashamed. I will not be made ashamed for sitting here and telling you to trust in the Lord. I will not be made ashamed. Now listen to this. I, I got to say this because there's some, 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 my God, some things that are happening in the church where churches are still gathering, you know, churches are still gathering when they shouldn't be. Use wisdom. Listen to this. We need to obey health guidelines. And the church, if anybody, any entity needs to establish, you know, the precedent. We need to lead the way in obedience. The, 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 the word of God tells us to obey our government. Now, if they were just shutting down the church, and all these other businesses could remain open, then we would have a problem. But everything is being shut down. So it's not an attack against the church. It's not an attack against us, uh, you know, specifically. This is an attack against humanity. This is an attack against God's creation from the kingdom of darkness. And so you need to stay home. Don't go to church. I don't care if your pastor is going. Do not go. Stay home and worship your God. Stay home and read your Bible. Stay home and, and honor God by obeying the laws. Stay home and, and stop gathering for worship services. Have your worship service with your family. Have your worship service if you're by yourself. Have your worship service with you and your God. Call somebody on the phone. Listen, before I came on Facebook this morning, my we had church service with us and you know my, my husband and I and our members. And it was wonderful. By the time we looked around, it was an hour and 30 minutes had just about gone by. The Lord visited. We worshiped. It was wonderful. Use the technology available. Use WhatsApp calls. Use Zoom. Use Skype. You Come on. Do do use what 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 God has given the resources in the earth you know this is why this is why 2020 is a year of vision because we're gonna need to move past how we normally see things to get things done 2020 we're in the year of vision God is saying open your eyes and see things for the possibilities for the things that that can be don't see limits see possibilities and so when you start seeing possibilities instead of limits, you won't gather God's people into the house of God uh, to, to bring harm on them and to the rest of the community. When you have vision, you don't do that. You don't do that. Use other mediums to fellowship with God. You know, create, create a, 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 a system of leadership where your leaders are responsible for 10 and responsible for 10 for getting in contact with those members, fellowshipping with them, praying for them. If you're a larger church, there's so much you can do. But don't don't risk the life of God's people to gather them in a building and God ain't there. Because if you are gathering and you are gathering against the laws of your, your state, your country, your community, you are dishonoring God and God is not there. And so you have gathered in vain. And so use wisdom. Faithful leaders in the kingdom of God do not encourage the church to break protocols and endanger their lives. If you, if you love God's people, have them stay at home and worship God. And by, by now, the people should have been taught how to worship God. You know, as leaders, we're to guide. You know, when, when, when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He said, tend my lamb, you know, feed my, feed my lambs. He said, you know, tend my sheep. Lambs and sheep need something different. For, for many churches, you should have mature believers who, who know how to cultivate an, an environment where God is welcome, who know how to create an atmosphere where God comes and ministers and, and, and you know, shows up to meet the needs of the people. And so you should have enough mature people in your church by now, some, some sheep, not lambs, not the babes. You should have sheep who can help you take care of the lambs in this time when we're not able to take care. And so this is really showing us as the body of Christ and as leaders specifically, have you done what you needed to do? And I'm not bragging, but my people know how to serve their God. I am not their God. They know how to serve their God. I've taught them how to serve their God. I've taught them how to pray. I've taught them how to watch. I've taught them how to be steadfast. I've taught them how to have devotions. So they don't need me. 
Now, I think they like being in my presence and they, you know, like being in my company. But at the end of the day where the rubber meets the road, not one of them going to be hungry for the word of the living God. There's no famine in the house of my members. Why? Because they know how to reach God. I have taught them that. My husband and I have taught them that. Amen. All right. So I want to end on this and then I'm going to pray. Faith says COVID-19, though, though present, is not going to take me out. Not going to take out my family, not going to take out my community, not going to take out my church. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that faith says COVID-19 will not be able to take out my family, will not be able to bring harm, will not be able to destroy me. That's what faith says. And I choose faith over fear. And I choose truth over facts in the name of Jesus. Faith says I will fight the virus with the word of God until it surrenders and dies in Jesus' name. And I, and I want to admonish you as I close. I'm closing now for real. You know, Pastor, we always got something to say. There's always something bubbling, always something, you know, extra. But I'm a woman of my word, so I'm closing right here and I'm going to pray. Don't eat so many facts about anything, but specifically COVID-19, that you struggle to believe the truth, which is God, God's word. Don't eat so many facts that you struggle to believe the truth, which is God's word. Turn off that TV and, and constant coverage of this public health issue and get into the word of the living God. You know what? Starve the facts and feed the truth. Eat that word of God and be encouraged that he's with you. And so now, Father, I'm going to pray your names because your names are your character and your names will invoke your presence. Even now, Father, I lift up your name, Yahweh Shabbat. Uh, the Lord is judge. And I decree and declare that you judge this, 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 this sickness. This is the spirit of infirmity that you judge it and you strike it down. I release your name, uh, Yahweh Shabbat, uh, over, the, over the name COVID-19. And I decree and declare that you judge it uh, and you strike it down uh, and, you, and you prevent it, Lord, from taking humanity. You prevent it from killing people who are made in your image and after your likeness. Father, I send your name, Yahweh Rofika, Yahweh Rapha, to the hospitals, Yahweh Rapha, to the homes where people are sick. I release your name, God, and I decree and declare that infirmity must respond to the name, Yahweh Rafika, the Lord, my healer, Yahweh Rafika, the Lord, my healer. Take away sickness in the hospitals throughout the world, in America, in Italy, in, Italy, in Europe, Father God, in Asia, Father God, in the Caribbean, Father God, wherever this thing has shown itself uh, and, it, and has people sick and lying on their sick bed. Uh, I decree and declare Yahweh Rafika, Yahweh Rafa comes now to heal in the name of Jesus. Uh, I release the name El Gabor, the Lord who is mighty against COVID-19 and all the destruction associated with it. Uh, I release the name El Gabor uh, and I command the knees of COVID-19 to bow uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and now God, I release your name uh, Yahweh Shalom. Uh, you are the God of peace, and I release your name of peace throughout the earth. Let the peace of God come upon hearts, Lord God, and come upon families who have lost loved ones. Let your peace, oh God, come on those who are in the hospital and those who have loved ones who are sick. Father, those who have lost their jobs or don't know what's going to happen. Father, I say, let your peace, Yahweh Shalom. Come on, lift up that name, Yahweh Shalom. Come on, lift up the name. Yahweh Shalom. Yahweh Shalom. Be the peace that we need in this time of uncertainty and difficulty. Be Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of the host of warring angels. Father, you are the host of warring angels. And I say, release your angels now throughout the four corners of the earth and let them war against the devil and his army that has released COVID-19 against humanity. Father God, let your angels excel in strength at the voice of your word, heeding your word to perform it in the name of Jesus. I release the name Yahweh Shama. The Lord is there for those who feel lonely, for those who feel alone, though you are in a group of people and you still feel alone. I release the name Yahweh Shama. The Lord is there. The Lord is present with you. You are not alone. He says, I promise to never leave you nor forsake you. I decree and declare, God, that somebody is feeling your presence and 
somebody is feeling your peace uh, and somebody is being comforted uh, by the spirit of the living God. Uh, I release your name, uh, Yahweh Hesenu, the Lord, my maker. Father, those who are sick and the, and the, 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 the med, med, uh, physicians don't know what to do. Uh, you are the maker of these people. You know what their bodies need. Uh, and so I ask that you give uh, the doctors and nurses wisdom, Lord God, uh, so that they know how to minister to the needs of those who are sick, oh God. Uh, I decree and declare that your name uh, is Yahweh Masgab. Uh, that means the Lord, my defense. Uh, defend, Lord. Uh, defend your people. Defend your church. Uh, now you have a responsibility specifically to those who are believers. Uh, but you also said that you make the sun uh, to shine on the just and the unjust. Uh, and so I release your name, Yahweh Masgab, first to the house of the Lord. Defend your people. Protect your people. And then I say because you are merciful, release defense, uh, Lord, to the sinner. And because of your kindness and mercy, may they bow their knee in submission to you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I release the name Yahweh Adonai. You are the sovereign king. Uh, you are still sovereign. Uh, you are still highly exalted. Uh, you are still lifted up. Uh, but beside you, there is no other. Your name is greater than every name, every name, every name. Uh, and so I lift you up uh, as Yahweh Adonai. Uh, you are Yahweh Adonai. You are the sovereign king and I, re and I, and I recognize you as such. Uh, and I lift up your name, Yahweh Rehoboth. Uh, the Lord who makes room. Now, Father, after all of this and we start coming out of lockdown as countries and, and, and cities and communities come out of lockdown, Father God, I ask that you make room for your people where things have been closed, where businesses are closed. We, we apply your name, Yahweh Rehoboth, that you would open up opportunities and open up space and, and provide for your people, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And lastly, Lord, I release your name, Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, my banner. Father, we recognize you as our banner. You know, the, the, the children's song says, his banner over me is love. We recognize your banner over us is love, but your banner over us is also victory. And so we decree and declare victory for your people. Right now, those who are in situations where only you can intervene and only you can help, we decree and declare that your name is Yahweh Nisi God. We decree and declare it in the name of Jesus. And we look back to Psalm 37, 19 that says, though we live in an evil time. And so we would say that these times are evil father where we're experiencing this pandemic but though we live in an evil time you said those who love you those who serve you god that and, and they they would not be without though we live in an evil time and though there is famine god you said that those who serve you would be satisfied and so i claim that for the church right now that you would satisfy every need god though we live in an evil time and though famine is all around we shall have abundance and enough to give father in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to give you thanks and praise and glory and honor for hearing our prayers, for blessing us, for protecting us and watching over us. Uh, I believe that the Lord has, has heard and he has responded and he is, he is making room, he is making space, he is blessing, he is protecting, he is providing, he is doing everything that is necessary. May the Lord bless the countries of this world, may the Lord bless the cultures of this world, and may the Lord bless the beautiful British Virgin Islands of where I reside and where I call home. God bless you so much for tuning in. Again, I am Apostle J.L. Hodge of Clarion Ministries, and this is the Clarion Call, and it's been a privilege to spend this wonderful, wonderful Sunday with you. And of course, we will do something for Resurrection Sunday to send the message throughout the world that Jesus ain't dead. No, 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 no. He was only dead for three days, but, but my Savior rose again. And so I can brag, my Savior rose again. He rose from the dead. He rose from the grave. He rose and his power is resident in believers, those who have put their trust in him. So it's been a pleasure. Once again, God bless you. Enjoy your Palm Sunday. You may not be in church. Have worship with your family. Recognize the sovereignty of God. Recognize what he's done for you. And trust me, you won't even, you won't even remember that you're not in, in the, the building that you're accustomed to going to church in. God's presence will fill the room right where you are, and you will be embedded with his peace. God bless you, and it's been a privilege being with you today. Bye-bye.